A couple of months ago, Riley Keo turned 28, so she went out for a celebratory dinner with friends and family. I drank some wine, she shrugs. But I don't like drinking, really. I have so much to do and it's hard to function with a hangover. She thinks for a moment. Actually, I don't like dinners either. Such a waste of time. I like eating, but I don't like that it's this whole experience, like picking a restaurant and going there and like sitting at a table. She speaks in a quiet, halting voice, grinning as though amused by how her idiosyncratic opinions sound when she says them out loud, and by the bizarre fact that most people actually enjoy food. Which is ironic, considering S.H.E.S. Elvis Presley's granddaughter, but we'll get to that. She sits calmly on a sofa in a Hollywood photo studio, with her flame red hair and denim shorts, and an expression that says, ISNT life curious. The prosaic explanation is that Keo HASNT got time for dinners, not with six movies coming out in 2017. I'm a workaholic, she explains. Very highly strung. SHE's so busy, SHES concerned that her anonymity may be in jeopardy. Her break came in The Runaways in 2010 with Dakota Fanning, then she landed a part in Mad Max Fury Road alongside Zoe Kravitz and Rosie Huntington-Whiteley. But it was her performance in The Girlfriend Experience, the Steven Soderbergh-produced series about an escort law intern, that had critics applauding like seals. SHE's a real and complicated anti-heroine, and the Golden Globe nomination was richly deserved. So now, SHES everywhere. Today, we're meant to be talking about Logan Lucky out this month, one of five films she has coming out this year. But first, there's this tattoo on her wrist that needs an explanation, four dots in a square beneath what looks like the Led Zeppelin symbol. Yeah, that's mine. It means I'm a self-existing world bridger, which is quite a serious job. On top of everything else see that's why no dinners. Riley wears dress by Adam, earrings by Belladora. Photograph Frederick Auerbach for The Observer Logan Lucky is her third project with Soderbergh Magic Mike was the first and, as always, she jumped in without seeing the script anyone would, it's not a twist my arm scenario. It's a rollicking heist movie, as is expected of Mr. Ocean's 11, 12 and 13, in which Keo plays Channing Tatum's sister and accomplice in a grand NASCAR ripoff. For Keo, however, the character came easy. Though S.H.E.S. a Cali Valley girl and proud, she has family all over the South, in Memphis in particular. On Graceland Avenue. I'm not meant to dwell on her family today, her publicist is right outside the open door, ready to pounce if I focus too much on her mother Lisa Marie and her ex-husbands Michael Jackson and Nicolas Cage, but it's fair to say that a familiarity with the South is the very least interesting thing about her upbringing. She grew up between the Graceland Estate and the Neverland Ranch. She'd be hanging out with Michael Jackson and his llamas one minute, and traveling to school with an armed security detail the next. Not to mention Lisa Marie's Scientology S.H.E.S. no longer a member, or the Nicolas Cage marriage that lasted a full 108 days. And yet, by some miracle, she seems perfectly sane. I suggest gently that S.H.E.S. not quite how I expected her to be, and she grins. I think I've had a more complex life than people are aware. Of. As a child I told my dad, I want to grow up and be poor like you. I didn't know how offensive that was for the record, she doesn't mind being referred to as Elvis' granddaughter. Why should I? It's a fact. And I'm not ashamed of that in any way. But that said, she never knew him. Elvis had been dead 12 years by the time she was born. She just knew that he was very, very famous. I knew the situation. I just didn't really think about it that much. She grew up the eldest of four between California Valley and Hawaii, traveling back and forth. Her father, Danny, was a bass player in Lisa Marie's band, but they divorced when Keo was six. Twenty days later, Lisa Marie married Michael Jackson, who had recently been accused of child abuse. That lasted two years, during which time Keo was the perfect age to enjoy Neverland. And after that, her life was split between Danny and Lisa Marie. I grew up very privileged with my mother, she says. But my dad didn't live like that. And I think experiencing both sides has been helpful. My father had mattresses on the floor of his apartments. He lived in cabins and trailer parks. He just didn't have much money. Did she ever think, ugh, do I have to go back to dad's again? Actually, my memories of growing up with him were so colorful and eccentric and fun. It was a good vibe. You know when I was like eight I told him, I want to grow up and be poor like you. He was eating a bowl of cereal. 
IDIDNT realize how wildly offensive that was Riley wears dress by Dior rings by Danielle Zeno courtesy of Broken English and Arenas. Photograph Frederick Auerbach for the Observer For a while she went to a regular school in the valley, but the constant security detail made life difficult. So homeschooling made more sense, particularly with all her traveling. Besides, she never liked school. I had like a bad reaction to authority, like mean teachers, or just a rude movie ticket person, anyone abusing their power. It really irritated me. So I was like super she but still kind of strong in myself. I was weird. An artistic career was the natural choice. Her family would have been alarmed if she had chosen to become a lawyer. But they were musicians, not actors, and music wasn't her thing. I played piano but am not particularly gifted. Movies felt endless to me, whereas music I could see myself getting bored of. She took to writing and directing films at home, casting her friends and bossing them about. I was pretty hardcore. I made my friends cry because I wanted the tears to be authentic. But it was mostly horror. Once I discovered that ketchup could be blood, things went downhill from there. Her ambitions took a turn in her tweens, though. I know people say like, oh I saw Alfred Hitchcock, or Citizen Kane but, for me, it was the dangerous lives of altar boys with Emile Hirsch and Moulin Rouge. I was 12 and I was like, wow, I want to be Nicole Kidman, she made me feel so sad I remember thinking how fulfilling it would be to do that, which is a big concept for a kid. Her attentions now turned to acting, she began talking to herself, pretending to be distraught, delighted, terrified. She made herself cry in front of the mirror. That's like the first sign that your child is going to be an actor. Is she crying in front of the mirror? The second one is is she emotionally unstable? It wasn't attention she wanted. During a performance of Winnie the Pooh, she came on stage as Rue, took one look at the crowd and ran off in tears. I thought you had to be super confident to be an actor. But you don't. You just have to be super fucked up. Hey family affair Keo, right, with her mother, Lisa Marie Presley, center, and grandmother Priscilla. Photograph Charbon O'Rick Shutterstock if she has a regret from that time, it's dropping out of high school. All the moving around meant she came to see herself as unacademic. That coupled with her inner anti-authoritarian and she just bailed, becoming the only one of her siblings not to finish. Her parents didn't stop her. They couldn't say, you need your diploma, because I booked my first audition really quickly. But with hindsight it was stupid. High school is important. SHE's happy to admit that being a Presley helped her get ahead. Had she been a musician, she might have faced pressure or expectation. Certainly her mother warned her, whatever you do, you have to work really or you won't be taken seriously. But on balance, it pays to be a Presley. It's been a huge help, she says. I'm very privileged. Like the normal story of moving to LA and it takes you three years to find an agent. I got one in a week. IWASNT all plain sailing, though. After the runaways she didnt work for two years, and went through the usual, trauma of auditions and rejection. But, she says, rejection just makes me work harder to prove myself. And so came Mad Max, and then the girlfriend experience, pet game changer. Im torn on whether to bring a child into the world, or to adopt, Riley with her husband, stuntman Ben Smith Peterson. Photograph Matt Barron Shutterstock It was an eye-opening experience, playing an escort. She found her character a good deal colder and more clinical than she is. It'd get nervous for her, going into situations. But she met several GFEs, as they're known, during her research. The writers introduced her and she saw how prostitution could be empowering. They had more of a male mentality. They didn't fall in love with everyone they had sex with. They weren't all up in their feelings all the time. They just liked having sex and the hustle of it all. And they got really rich. It got me thinking a lot about sex. Like, why is it so controversial? I just don't get why it's such a big deal. So you're not into drinking, dinners or sex? That's not much of a Tinder profile. I sound like a horrible girlfriend? No, of course, I care about sex. I just don't get the obsession. Just for the record, Keo's Tinder window is closed now, if it was ever open in the first place. She married Ben Smith Peterson, an Australian stuntman in 2015, at the age of 25 young by modern standards, though Keo is old-fashioned in some ways. One of the things she loves about the South, for instance, is their staunch family values. My mom had me at 21, and her mom had her at 21, so I think 25 is old, she laughs.
Marriage is just something I wanted to experience in my lifetime, to be honest with you. But the older I get, the less urgent it feels to have a kid. Not to be too grim, but the world is in a weird place, so I'm kind of torn on whether to bring a child in, or to adopt. Like morally. In the meantime, the life of Riley is a simple one. She lives in LA, walks her dogs and works on a hush-hush movie project with her writing partner that she might direct or not, she won't say. Every couple of months she debts off to make movies, and then there are interviews like this one to defer all the movies S.H.E.S. got coming out. Like the L.A. crime thriller starring Andrew Garfield later this year, the family drama with Catherine Keener, a project with Joel Edgerton. I don't like talking about myself though, she says. I don't like attention, which is weird in this career. And she recognizes the irony. She smiles. I.S.N.T. life curious then her publicist whisks her away. Elvis' granddaughter has left the building. Logan Lucky is out on the 25th of August.